killed her. She's dead. Make no mistake. She wants me there. He's a cold-blooded killer. I think we have the most lethal street in network television. It's that dark humor that kind of attracted me to this series in the first place. We were playing kind of all the social satire and a lot of funny stuff, but I needed that dark, twisted thing. Can you take care of that beautiful family of yours. Did you kill your wife? The mystery, which has been woven through every season, really adds to your wanting to watch. As we started to create this character of this woman who was manipulative and um, had a kind of a twisted relationship with her son, and this sounds awful now that I'm describing it, but I thought of Dixie Carter, my old boss. And Dixie's a lovely woman, she's very sweet, but she does have a flair for the dramatic. How dare you! You have no right! My first indication that this is gonna be unusual for me was a line that I had in my first show I should have smothered you in your crib when I had the chance. It was the most frightening, horrifying thing to say. It wasn't just what she said. It, it, a lot of times what I found uh, spooky about her was what she didn't say. It was in the quiet moments, like standing over the bed and staring down at a Brie that she's drugged. What are you doing here? I came to take care of you. In terms of the mother, <laughs> I thought she was way too kind, so I was happy when she Parker. met her end. Here we go. Okay. She's a real trooper, first of all, so nothing she wouldn't try. He literally threw me against the wall. She was so brave during all the sequence where I'm drowning her in the tub. Very strong, strong physique. So it was, it was definitely, I was, I met my match, you know. Sorry, uh, Monique's upstairs taking a nap. She wasn't feeling well. I think the intention initially was to make Orson sort of last for one year and visit no good on to the Van de Kamp family. Kyle's character was originally designed to be a villain. We were going to have him be a real bad guy and meet a horrible end at the end of season three. Don't forget your wrench. And it's funny because we all thought, including the writers, I think, that Orson was going to be the bad guy. And then everybody fell in love with him. Yes, I will marry you, Orson. He always seemed to have an answer or something plausible as to why whatever was happening was happening. Why didn't you tell me that the police searched your house? Because it's embarrassing. We still have to figure out how to put to bed the old hit and run. Well, the fight was good for a number of reasons. Oh, yeah, up on the top of the parking garage. It was insane. It was short and kind of vicious. It's good. <laughs> He was someone just trying to escape his past and trying to get what he'd always wanted, which was the happy home life he never had. Mark and the writers created this guy who had a lot of layers to him. Each week, I sort of would get to take another layer off and reveal another little twist. I think someone could use a cocoa. Wait. I understand why you might feel a little threatened about my moving in here. Alma is misguided and obsessive. I'm perfectly harmless. She's crazy bad. One of the craziest scenes that we had together was when she drugs me and then decides she's gonna uh, have her way with me. The rape scene was not my idea. The writers came up with that when I wasn't in the room. 
And I walked in and they said, well, we're planning on having um, Orson and Hodge get raped. And I said, really? I was so thrilled because this was, it was historical, really. I don't think we've ever seen a woman rape a man on TV. We want this baby to be born of love. She played it so perfectly, not an easy role to do. You're crazy. Crazy for you, mister. Maybe I am a little crazy. Because we have actors like the lovely Valerie Mahaffey, um, I think we really pulled it off and we made sense of it. But at first I was kind of like a little shocked. What a great thing to get to be as weird as possible, as crazy as possible, as mean as possible as an actor. I could be expecting right now. Were you expecting this? I think this is a little stiff. I have a really fun idea. <laughs> Nora, as played by Kirsten Warren, was one of the most annoying characters we ever created, but I think one of the most interesting foils we ever came up with as well. She sat down so quickly, didn't know what to say. How about you're in the frame, bitch, move. It's a wife's worst nightmare, or one of their worst nightmares. What's your problem, Lynette? So there's a lot of drama in that, and there's a lot of comedy that comes out of that. Sounds good. Hey, Mark. So do you sell by the slice, or do I got to buy a whole pie? Kirsten Warren was so great on the show that she scared me off camera. Everything about her was predatory. I believe in you. On one of the fan websites, one of my writers read a woman saying that she always thought the character was annoying and just hated her, and then cried when she died. Kill us, you. She was desperately dangerous, vacillating between I don't need you to I need you desperately. It made for a really compelling character. You led me on. You shouldn't have done that. Attention shoppers, we're having a special today on not getting shot, but it's only available at the back of the store. To me, the episode that I'm, I'm most proud of is our hostage episode in the supermarket. The whole town is laughing at me. You hear that, Harvey? I only told one person. Well, it was clearly the wrong one. It's a very dangerous situation. I said nobody move. And Carolyn Bixby's wielding that gun. Hey! A stock boy has been shot, so we know that Laurie Metcalf means business. Laurie Metcalf, who could make the phone book funny or tragic, depending on what she wanted to do. I'm having a real bad day here. Is a little cooperation too much to ask? Lori Metcalf was nothing short of brilliant. Yeah, but there's a crazy woman in there! Yeah, I know. It was so intense when, when we did that whole shooting scene. I mean, probably the most intense scene any of us have ever filmed on Desperate Housewives. Why didn't you say so? You ever wear your hair down? What? Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> Why? Looks really good. I've gotten the biggest kick out of Felicity's whole emotional affair, emotional adultery. I thought it was really fun to see Lynette turn into a little bit of a girl, and it was fun for me to do for the first time I got to wear a dress. <laughs> woo -hoo! Everything, the food, the wine, you. An incredible chemistry just seems to evolve between these two people. It's just purely on a unspoken, helping each other out, reading each other's minds kind of level. You need to be more careful. Two of you are just asking for trouble. I got so much feedback just from people on the street. Women would come up and go, oh, I hope you get to sleep with him. He's so wonderful. It's just what Lynette needs. And then oddly enough, I would have guys coming up and going, don't sleep with him. Whatever, you're married now. Don't go for him. I really think it's an interesting ethical question and people come down on all sides of it. We've been flirting since we met. Yes, flirting, that's it. It's what married people do. I don't know, I, it's up to you, America, I ask you. Freeze! Austin? Hey, Aunt Edie. We had the idea, I think, at the beginning of season three that we should give Edie a cute, sexy, troublemaking nephew. I'm Austin, Edie Britt's nephew. Oh. I really feel like he added a young, 
uh, kind of edgy element to the show. Just keep it down. You had it really loud. That's how I like it. Definitely brought some of the younger characters trouble and kind of wreaked havoc. How do you like it? We're gonna have sex whether you help us or not. I love that uh, we had the bad boy nephew come to town and of course fall in love with the good girl. The responsible thing is to abstain from sex and focus on your studies. Condoms are only 85% effective. Susan hears her say condom and it makes her hand slip and she goes flying down the stairs. Mom, what happened? Are you okay? That was fun having a Josh, who played Austin, come in and kind of shake everything up. You know, I have the occasional mother come up and go, you're never gonna date my daughter. I see what you do on that show. Danielle and Austin, it was a bad girl and a bad boy. You know, that's like fire and gasoline. You know something bad's gonna happen. I'm pregnant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's dangerous when it comes to knocking up females. I can't stand you. Oh, nice way to talk to the mother of your child. Oh, God. Oh, I've just got some stuff in my freezer I don't want thawing out anytime soon. I'd like y'all to meet Gilbert. She wanted to see Gretna and gave her one. The revelation of her husband in the freezer is just fantastic. I, I can't imagine being more interested in another character than Mrs. McCluskey. I had to kind of give her this dark secret, but then explain it, you know, so that the audience could still accept her on our street. So can you understand now why I had to do what I did? You know, easy come, easy go. We all make mistakes. <laughs> That little Mrs. McCluskey, nothing but trouble. <sighs> What's that smell? I admire her chutzpah and her honesty, even though she kept that husband dead in the freezer. <sighs> he gets dusty. I give you the next mayor of Fairview, Victor Lang! It's much more fun to play somebody who's got something else on the agenda than just what you, you hear come out of his mouth. Do you know how much I love you? Oh! Yeah, you get little windows of how manipulative he is. He's got a snake-like quality to him where he slithers on in. I'm not too worried. I've always been able to manage my assets. I think if Gabby and Victor were on a playing field, I mean, she definitely has an advantage. I'm really sorry. I've just been under a lot of pressure lately. Well, here's one last thing you have to worry about. And she thinks that, you know, he's he's actually this really good guy and very caring and all that stuff. And then, bam, he pulls one over on her. I was just joking around, being me. I thought you liked that. I do, in private. In public, you have to act like a grown-up. I'm surprised I'm still alive. Any word from the bridal party? They're still in the bride's room. You know women. They're probably in there fussing about mascara and blush. He did not hack her up and dissolve the pieces in acid. That's the thing that Mark Cherry does so brilliantly, is he combines humor and drama all at the same pitch, and there's nuance in it. And I think that's what's really delicious about our dangerous characters. There isn't, you know, light without dark and comedy without drama, and it seems to be responsible for a lot of the tone of the show. You know, that kind of black comedy, kind of weird line that we have to ride. It rivals anything I've ever done in just pure enjoyment. Just watch yourself, sunny boy.